Hey guys, okay, so today I'm gonna be showing you how to make these super cute crochet flower hair clips. So the original purpose of me making these hair clips was um, actually, to be totally honest with you, a friend of mine has recently had a new baby. So um, I used to make these little baby alligator hair clips for my daughter all the time when she was small. And then as I was making some flower hair clips, she actually saw me making them and she was like, oh my gosh, mommy, I really like that too. And I said, you know what, baby, I'll make some for you too. So anyway, I did buy this bag of alligator hair clips. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to order these as well. Um, and they come in two different sizes. So there's these larger ones and there's these little ones. And um, so I guess it just depends on whatever project you've got going on, but it is a really great value. So I will include a link in the description below um, if you'd like to have those. So um, like I said, for this particular pattern, I use the baby size and it doesn't have to be just for a baby. My daughter's 10 and she's the one in the picture that I showed um, at the start of this video with uh, wearing the hair clip. So it is a cute little oversized flower for a baby or just a really pretty hair accessory hair clip for um, for any any age. Um, and actually some other little fun things before I get started on the pattern that I want to share with you some other uses for this um, this flower clip. Because of the type of hair clip I selected, these alligator clips, it was a little strategic on my part because these are super versatile and very, very gentle. So it won't, um, it won't cause snags or anything like that. And it's, it doesn't, it's, it's really, really, um, it's a great clip to use for accessorizing bags or um, uh, hair bands or hats. Um, and even using as closures for a shawl. So anyway, I just thought it's really cute and I wanted to point those uses out as well. So let's get started on this hair clip. I will be using a two millimeter crochet hook. And for this particular pattern, I'm using um, a crochet thread, or sorry, cotton, a crochet cotton yarn. Um, this was actually something I, you'll see me doing this a lot when I have leftover yarn in my yarn stash. They don't always have labels. I can't always remember what they were called um, or brand or anything like that. Every time I do have it, I always make note of it, but I, I apologize. I don't have that in this case. Um, but anyway, any crochet cotton yarn is perfect and it could just be any yarn to be honest with you just the thickness or whatever will just determine the size of the flower and um, so anyway I'm going to go ahead and get started. So what you need to do to make the base so the first step that we're going to work on with this pattern is the base of the flower. So you're going to we're going to begin with a magic ring and um, you're just going to drape the yarn over your hand like this. Just hold it in place with your thumb. Wrap it around those four fingers and gently cross it over. Then taking your hook, you're going to go under that first piece, over the next one, and carefully pull it up. Pinch it to hold it in place. This part can be a little tricky and kind of frustrating for those of you that are making a magic ring for the first time because it's very loose. I used to actually hate working with a magic ring when I first learned how to do it because it is a very delicate process to get your hand out and get your working yarn ready. So just be patient. Once you get the hang of this, I promise you're going to love it. You're going to chain one very carefully. Okay. Now, when you are working in the magic ring, your first uh, few stitches before we close the ring, it's very, very important that you work over the two pieces that you've got going on here, okay? So we are going to do five half double crochets. So you're gonna yarn over your hook, push your hook right in the middle of that magic ring, yarn over, pull up a loop. So you've now got three loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over and pull right through all three loops, okay? So you're gonna go ahead and do that five times over those two pieces of yarn like I mentioned and then come back once you've done your five. So pause the video, do five half double crochets and then come okay. back. Okay, so now that you've finished your five half double crochets into the magic ring, we're gonna close it up here. So you're gonna take that loose, uh, the small tail end here and just pull it right through to close it up. Okay, 
you're gonna find that little chain one that you started off with, okay? And close with a slip stitch. This is very important to note that this will be the only time you're closing any of these rounds. Hang on, I made a little mistake there. Let me just get it just into the chain one. I picked up a little piece of the next stitch there. So let me just fix that up. Sorry guys. So close it with a slip stitch just by pulling your loop right through both that are on the hook. Okay, so like I said, we are not gonna close any more rounds. So for those of you that might get a little thrown off when you're working in the round in general, you will definitely get thrown off when you're working in the round and not closing your rounds. So I would suggest you go ahead, chain one, that's how we're starting this round, and then use a stitch marker. Um, I have, I'll show you my little kit that I'm using here. Um, so these are super cute. These, I actually sell these on Amazon, to be honest with you. I've included a link in the description below. Um, when they eventually sell out, I don't know that I'll be replenishing these on Amazon. I'll probably, if anything, replenish them on my Etsy shop. Um, but there's, a, just go ahead and click the link anyway. It doesn't matter when you see this video because this is a really popular item on Amazon. So you will still get it. I just like to be very transparent and let you know that the reason, you know, if you see DIY from Home Crochet, when you click the link, through uh through amazon i don't need to go is she only recommending these because she sells them no i'm actually not going to try and sell to you that's super annoying but i just wanted to be honest and and point that out so anyway i do like those stitch markers um use whatever stitch marker you like i know a lot of people tend to use a piece of scrap yarn i actually used to do that all the time when i first saw the, like all the different kind of little stitch markers i'm like forget that i'm not gonna waste my money on that i'm just gonna use a scrap piece of yarn and that works too um but personally Sorry about that. Personally, there's been one too many times where the scrap piece of yarn I'm using has fallen out and I lose my place and it's just super infuriating. So I prefer the ones that lock. Um, anyhow, so whatever stitch marker you choose to use, this is a good time to use it. Go ahead and put it into that chain one space so that you can hold your place. You don't wanna uh, get all confused. You can also just use the method of counting your stitches if you're good at that, but I mean, you know, a lot of people tend to get confused that way too. So I definitely recommend just go ahead and use a stitch marker. It just makes life a whole lot easier for you. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and start with this next round. So now we are going to be working in the back loop of all the stitches. So when you have a look at your stitch, it's kind of like this little V shape here. I don't know if you can see that well. There we go. That little V shape, that's a full stitch. We are not going to be working the full stitch. We're only working the back loop of it. So we're going to put our hook right over the top and into that back loop, okay? So we're going to do two back loop half double crochets all the way around. So because we have five stitches that we did in our magic ring, doing two back loop half double crochets in every single stitch around, you should end this round with 10 stitches in total. So you're going to yarn over, go into that back loop, yarn over and pull up a loop and you're just going to work those half double crochets as normal the only difference is you're going in the back loop rather than the whole stitch okay so go ahead and just work two back loop half double crochets all the way around do not close your round i will show you how we're going to continue beyond uh that chain one space without closing our round it will make sense to you when we start to do the pedals Okay, so go ahead, two in each one, you should have a total of 10 and then come back. Okay, so now that you've completed 10 stitches total, you're back around to the beginning. So when you're normally working the round, and this part is going to make um, any of you OCD people out there that are like me a little bit crazy. It's a little eye twitching for this part because you're going to know that you're skipping over a gap here. Don't worry, it will end up looking just fine. So normally what we would do at this point is we would close our round in that chain one space. Like I said, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna skip right over it and start working in that chain so we can have continuous rounds with no closing. You're gonna yarn over, skip over that chain one space, and you're going to do two, it's a little awkward when you're doing this first stitch, two half double crochets in that first back loop, okay? So one and two. Oh, Jiminy. Okay, so that's two. Now you're gonna do one 
in the next. Okay. Two in the following. Jeez. And one in the next. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm, you know what? I'm going to slow down. I'm really sorry if my hands seem a little shaky. At some points, I try and rush a bit. I'm going to be honest with you. During this whole COVID 19 quarantine situation, <laughs> I am like many other working mamas. Uh, and I've got a whole bunch of my kids home because there's no school. So I'm trying to do this and make like no noise happening. But I'm in love with you. I've got kids that are playing around. So every time I start to hear sounds, I'm like, oh my gosh, let me hurry up and get through this step and push pause to <laughs> quiet down the madness and move on to the next step. So I apologize for that. Um, anyway, you're going to go ahead and do two, one, two, one. You're going to keep on with that alternating pattern until you get all the way back around to the start. By the time you get back to the start, to know that you're on track, you should have a total of 15 stitches, okay? So go ahead and continue on with that alternating pattern until you get back to the start of this round, uh, sorry, to the end of this round, the beginning of the next, and do not close your rounds. Don't forget about that. All right, so go ahead and continue. You should have 15 stitches by the time you finish this one doing that alternating pattern, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that you're back around to the start and you should have a total of 15 stitches, now is where I show you that it all comes together nicely. So because we never closed that last round and we never had to do a slip stitch or anything like that, there's nothing to skip over here. So there's the very next stitch that we're gonna start working in. This is a good time to go ahead and move up your stitch marker, okay, to help you keep track. You can put it in the front loop of that first stitch of the next round. Okay, you just wanna move up your stitch marker as you go. It just really helps you to keep place. Okay, so now for this next round, and I'll mention that by the end of this next round, you should have a total of 20 stitches. So what we're gonna be doing is two half double crochets in the back loop of that first stitch. Okay, one half double crochet in the back loop of the following two stitches. Okay, and you're just gonna go ahead and continue with that alternating pattern all the way around. So you're gonna do two in the next, one, one, two, one, one. And by the time you get back to the start here, you should have a total of 20 stitches. Okay, so go ahead, pause your video, uh, follow that alternating pattern, two back loop, half double crochet, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around and then come back. Okay, so now we are gonna do the last round of the base of our flower. You can go ahead and move that stitch marker up if you'd like to. I'm just gonna take mine off now. Uh, I'm just gonna rely on the counting of my stitches. Okay, so for this next one, you're gonna do two, half double crochets in the back loop of the first stitch. So one and two. And then you're gonna do one back loop, half double crochet in the following three stitches. And you're gonna go ahead and continue on all the way around with this alternating pattern, okay? So you're gonna do two, one, 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 two, one, 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 all the way around. And by the time that you get to the start, you should have 25 stitches in total all the way around and then come back. Okay, so now that you're back around to the beginning and you finished that, uh, that little alternating round, you should have a total of 25 stitches around. And you're just gonna go, now this is what would be the first stitch of the next round. We're just gonna close this off with a slip stitch into that full stitch. So push your hook right through the entire stitch, yarn over and pull right through both loops. Oh. Okay, pull up a bit extra for a little tail end there because you're gonna wanna secure it at the end. And just take your scissors and fasten off and then continue pulling that through. Okay, so now you're done. You can, if it's curling a little, just give it a little tug and flatten it out. Okay, so now you're done with the base of your flower. 
So we're gonna begin working on the petals now. You're gonna to wanna to look into the center and find the very first back loop. That one would have been the chain space. You don't really wanna, you could go into that. Nope, that is the first front loop. Okay, my mistake. So you're gonna find, so you're gonna look at the middle of your work and find, you can tell just even by following with your hook, which direction you obviously are gonna go this way, right? You're not gonna go that way. So you're gonna get your hook into that very first front loop because now for the petals so for the base of the flower we worked in the back loop of every single stitch now for the petals we're going to work in the front loop of every single stitch okay so um let's go ahead and get our yarn because we're going to reattach it now for our petals so you're going to make your starting loop you don't want to leave much of a tail end for this one, you want it to hide within the petals. So just cross it over gently like that. Lift up the one under and push a little bit of the one over through. And then secure it to your hook. Okay. So just for the purpose of attaching the yarn, we're going to pull that through and chain one. Okay, but that chain one won't be repetitive. That's just to attach it. Okay. So now we're gonna begin the petals. So you're gonna do a single crochet in that first front loop. Okay, you're gonna chain three. One, two, three. You're gonna work a treble crochet. So yarn over your hook twice. Go into the very same front loop that you just worked in. Yarn over, pull up a loop. So you've now got four loops on your hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the next two, yarn over and pull through the last two. Now we're gonna work another treble crochet in the next front loop. Okay, so you're working another treble crochet in the next front loop and you're gonna work yet another treble crochet in the very same front loop. Each petal takes three front loop stitches, okay? So we've just worked in two. We're gonna now do another treble crochet in our third front loop. Okay, so that's now another treble crochet. You're gonna chain three on top of that last one and slip stitch into that th same third front loop. Okay, so that's one petal. You are gonna go ahead and repeat this all the way around constantly. Now you see why we didn't close our rounds. In every single front loop all the way around. So you're gonna begin with their single crochet in this next front loop, okay? You can rewind back and have a look at the steps for that petal that we just did. But you're just gonna repeat this all the way around. Come back to me when you found yourself up at the top here, okay? Okay, so now that you have finished doing all your petals, you're finding yourself here where you have just worked in the very last front loop that you had. Going into this next stitch just right here on the base of the flower just to secure everything, you're gonna close with a slip stitch through the full stitch. and then just pull out a bit of a tail there and use your scissors to fasten up. Okay, so now you're gonna use a yarn needle to hide these little tail ends. Um, and it just also helps to secure your work. So all you're gonna do is just take your yarn needle and just weave it a little bit. I just go in and out of some of the stitches around, just like that just secures it in place. Okay, we can pull it and stretch out the base a little bit. And then I just go right down a couple like this. Okay, and then fasten that off. And you're gonna do the same thing with these other little bits, okay? Now once you've got all your tail ends weaved in and fastened off, you're going to take one of your clips 
I'm just gonna find one of the baby sizes here. Okay. And whatever glue that you want, I prefer Gorilla Glue because for two reasons. One, it dries very, very quickly. And two, there's no taking that off. I mean, you would have to put great effort. And if you think about it, little kids, they're not exactly very careful and delicate. And if they don't want to wear it, they tend to just pull it off. So I just figure for durability reasons, that is what I prefer. I am aware there's all kinds of different glue out there. So if you have your preference that you've been working with, by all means, go ahead and use that too. Um, I have just found best results from using um, Gorilla Glue. So you literally, and be very careful because it will also stick to your skin. Do not have it around your kids. Oh goodness. So just put, I put it right from like just beyond the edge there. I just put a little strip like that, hold it down for a couple seconds and it will literally dry and be just like this one. So you can see, I just put it just beyond the, the tip there and that's it. It's uh, sticks really well and it's super durable, and you've got yourself a cute little crochet flower hair clip. Don't forget to click subscribe and check out the links in the description below.